The looming threat of a nuclear exchange continues following the news that North Korea fired a ballistic missile over Japan without warning on Monday. Yeah, this is the first time North Korea has done this in five years, and all eyes are now on the United States for a potential response. Here to discuss is Fred Flights. Uh, Fred, thanks for joining us this morning. You've drawn attention to Trump's approach to North Korea and how there were no missiles tested between December 2017 and mid-2019. How is the current administration's handling of North Korea leading to these missile tests? Because a very, very different scene here with President Biden. Yeah, that's a big question. Uh, North Korea tested... Uh, uh, a, a huge number of missiles in the Obama and Trump administrations, but it stopped testing long-range missiles at the end of 2017 because of Trump's intensive personal diplomacy, uh, the fact that there was a real threat that Trump might attack North Korea. We know there was a summit in Singapore in mid-2018. The long-range missile test resumed uh, this, this spring. North Korea has now tested 44 missiles in 2022, the most ever in a single year, and it fired a missile over Japan for the first time since 2017. And this is a big deal to Japan because these missiles are designed to carry nuclear warheads, and there could be an accident where one of them could crash into Japan. Now, Fred, just because of those missile launches right there, this is a significant escalation in its weapon testing program. But as you mentioned, the manner that it was done, too, shooting a missile towards Japan over their sea, what could this all mean coming from North Korea? What's the point of all of this? Well, look, they're testing. Uh, they have hypersonic missiles. They have cruise missiles. Now, now they have ICBMs. It certainly shows that North Korea is resuming the openly uh, showing and testing its WMD programs. It's also preparing for an underground nuclear test. It's excavating a site where it tested in the past. My guess is that North Korea wants to get back to the negotiating table to extract concessions from the West, especially the United States. Right. It sees a weak U.S. president and it sees an opportunity. Yeah, they want sanctions relief. Um, North Korea hit hard by COVID-19 as well. But Fred, what do you make of this Kim Jong-un ratcheting up the provocation, um, doing something like this, sort of in concert with what Vladimir Putin is doing uh, in Ukraine right now? Look, the North Koreans see an opportunity. They, they, they see what's going on in the rest of the world. The North Koreans also don't like to be ignored. And that's what's happening here. I don't know if you know this or not, but Biden has named a part-time envoy to deal with North Korea, who's also ambassador to Indonesia. There's no obvious Biden North Korea policy. So that's made the perception of the weakness and the fact there's no policy, I think they have, they have combined to create the situation. Fred, what should the U.S. be doing? You know, there should be high-level engagement with North Korea. Why hasn't Anthony Blinken gone there? Why hasn't he opened talks with the North Koreans? Yeah. Why hasn't Jake Sullivan gone there? They, have, they don't even talk about North Korea. I don't want to give them more attention than, than, than they're due, but we know North Korea has nuclear weapons, probably 40 to 50 weapons, possibly more, and this isn't a threat we can just ignore. All right, Fred Flights, we appreciate it. Um, I, I still, I don't grasp why de-escalation is never part of the conversation. Yeah. Eight months into the war in Ukraine, uh, Elon Musk's, you know, he, he's at least proposing a possible peace path for Russia and Ukraine, and uh, President Zelensky rejects it. It's like, look, eight months ago, 99% of the American people couldn't find Ukraine on a map, and here we are on the precipice of nuclear war, and nobody, including Antony Blinken, is talking about peace. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Fred Flights, I'm really we appreciate concerned it. about that. When a megalomaniac with huge number of nuclear weapons threatens to use them, you yes. should be paying attention. More nuclear weapons than any other country on the planet yeah, in Vladimir scary. Putin. Scary stuff. Fred Flights, thank you. We appreciate it.